Good evening and welcome to another session of the Ephesians Bible Study in our home prayer meeting. Now, for the past weeks, we had been looking at the way of the new man. Tonight, we will be looking at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Now, for our study of the Word of God this evening, please turn your Bibles with me to Ephesians chapter 4. And tonight, let me read to you from verse 21 of this passage. This is what the Word of God says. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. And here's our text. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Before we expound on the Word of God this evening, let us first come to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Father, today we come before you, knowing that your Word had shown us what this way of righteousness and true holiness looks like. Tonight, Father, as we look into your Word, I pray that you would guide us into all the truth. Help us to see the things you want us to see and may the truths that we receive from your word this evening simply burn in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen and Amen. For the past weeks, we had been learning that as we have known Christ and as we have been taught by Him, we therefore, as a response, must put off the old man and put on the new man. Now, for those weeks, we have also learned that the new man has been created after God's righteousness and true holiness. From, uh, from the following weeks, we have also seen how this righteousness and true holiness looks like. We have learned that it looks like as a mark of the new man, it's speaking truth. Also, we learn that as a mark of a new man, it is also anger without sin. And tonight, we will be looking at honorable labor. Now, our prayer for you tonight is that you will know that the way of the new man is marked by honorable labor. Now, let's expound our passage and look at the following things one by one. The first one is the rejection of stealing as a means of living. Now, we read in our passage tonight these words. Let him that stole steal no more. Now, we see the following first. What is the definition of stealing? Now, the Webster's Bible Dictionary defines stealing as follows. It is, number one, to take and carry away feloniously. That word means uh, evil in the archaic sense. Uh, to carry away feloniously the personal goods of another, that is, with an intent to take what belongs to another 
without his consent. Number two, to withdraw or convey without notice or clandestinely. This means secretly or stealthily. Also, number three, to gain or win by address or gradual and imperceptible means. Now, the concept of stealing carries with it the idea of taking what is not yours in a stealthy manner. Those are the important concepts. Taking what's not yours and in a stealthy manner. With this definition, we could see the scope of the term stealing. Here are some examples. Of course, it's not exhaustive, but stealing is as follows. It could be burglary, like aket bahay, or breaking and entering, pickpocketing or snatching, not returning borrowed items, okay? corruption in the government, even in government contracts with quote-unquote legalized SOPs, rigged biddings, and the sort. Doing under time while logging in the right time dishonestly. Usury or lending money with interest. Overpricing, shortchanging. And shortchanging is just like you pay for an item and they say, wala akong barya, pwede bang uh, candy na lang or something? That's an example of shortchanging. Hoarding is another. Taking positions by force and or manipulation or any stealthy means, this would include padrinos, favors by utang na loob, even degrees or uh, school degrees, graduate degrees that are bought or attained by not so legitimate means. Shoplifting is another. This includes stealing items from hotels, airplanes, restaurants, etc. that are not given for free. Cheating, scamming, swindling, gambling, games of chance like lotto, tax evasion, not paying proper taxes, or a dishonest declaration of income. Pri piracy, tomb raiding, pirated movies, games, and music, hacking, cover up of financial records, taken taking and even returning without permission, not paying debts or running away from debt, and I'm sure there are many more examples, but the key idea is taking what is not yours in a stealthy and dishonest manner. Now, how does the world view stealing? The truth is, the world is at a dichotomy when it comes to stealing. On the one hand, the world sees it as a moral wrong, prima facie, okay? So much so that, for example, if anyone goes to prison for stealing, it would highly be unlikely or atypical for a person to question whether the person deserves the punishment or not. So the world agrees it is a moral wrong. But on the other hand, the world appears to uphold it as a virtue and is addicted to it. Consider, they see it as normal with lying and cheating. Now, the Joseph and Edna Josephson Institute of Ethics in June 1993 had discovered that 33% of high school kids and 16% of college kids said that they have stolen something last year and are not bothered. So, for them, stealing is normal. Also, the world is desensitized to it. It appears that stealing, because it's normal, and it has been normalized even in sports, remember? In basketball, one of the statistics that are to watch for are the number of steals that a player does. In baseball, they steal bases as well. But more of that 
is that in movies and romance novels, the world has actually glamorized the one who steals. So much so that it becomes something thrilling and it becomes virtuous for them. It's normal. The world has been desensitized to it. And number three, it has been philosophized. Now, we hear in the ethics of Immanuel Kant, these words, take the property of others only when it is necessary for survival. Bentham, another philosopher, also says, stealing is morally good if for the pleasure of the greater number. Aristotle also said, the act of stealing on the basis of righteousness, courage, and virtuous patience may be considered moral. This is like Robin Hood that steals from the rich and gives to the poor. This is like um, Le Miserable, where Jean Valjean was imprisoned for stealing a loaf of bread to feed his family, and it appeals to our sense of injustice. You see? But when the Apostle Paul said in his word, let him that stole steal no more, it is absolutist in nature. It does not say that you should not steal as long as you have enough resources. No, it doesn't. It doesn't say that you should not steal if your neighbor is kind and good. And if not, pwede mo nang nakawin yung manok. Rather, it simply says that one should stop seed stealing full stop. With that, we see the admonition against stealing. Now, the biblical view of stealing is diametrically opposite from the world's view. So much so that the believers at Ephesus stopped uh, the ones who were used to be stealing, stopped those acts of stealing as a means of living. Because the scriptures go absolutely opposite of how the world views it. For this reason, the King James Bible renders the present participle as stole. Okay? This admonishes the believer to not even think of returning to stealing as a means of living, regardless the situation or circumstance. At the same time, the Apostle Paul gives this alternative. Stop stealing and work for a living. So we see that stealing is rejected, but regard for the honorable work as a means of living is upheld. So we'll see at that. We read our passage as we continue. It says, Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good. That is, number one, labor to work. This is the display of skill. Notice the phrase, working with his hands. Now, the other time that this phrase is used is in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. Let's turn to that. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. The Word of God says this, And that ye study to be quiet, and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands, as we, as we commanded you. Okay, here the Apostle Paul, in, our, in that passage in 1 Thessalonians, instructs the Thessalonians, who have people in the ranks, who have become idle, and don't want to work anymore. But the Apostle Paul said, that they have to be working with their own hands, utilizing what God has given them, the skills that God has given them, to make a living. 
Paul did the same in Corinth, not wishing to be a burden, but rather he worked as a tent maker in order to support his needs and the ministry. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 12. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 12, we read these words. And labor, that's the word, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer it. Now, Apostle Paul showed that there is honor in working with the skill that God has given with our own hands to provide for our needs. Many, especially of the sort of the false teachers at Corinth, see no honor in labor, but rather they had reviled the Apostle Paul for working with his own hands. But it is honorable to display God-given skills to make a living. Also, the description of the outcome is the good thing. We are instructed to work with our hands the thing which is good. Now, Zig Ziglar tells of a story of, a, of an expert counterfeiter. At the time, the $20 bill is the highest currency of the dollar. One day, this counterfeiter has been discovered because the bill that he had given and paid for in his grocery had smeared off. Now, the grocer called the police and the police went to his house. And it was indeed proven that he was an expert counterfeiter. And when the police looked at the dollar bill, the $20 bill, they say they cannot tell the difference because of the expert painting. It is also discovered in his house, paintings that this counterfeiter had also made. These are original paintings by the counterfeiter. They said, let's auction the paintings. It turns out, that the paintings of this counterfeiter was sold for $5,000. $20 bills, $5,000. The irony is the counterfeiter actually spent the same amount of time with the $20 bill against the $5,000 painting. So, here's the irony. When he stole with his counterfeiting, he stole and cheated his own skill which God has endowed him to begin with. There is honor in showcasing the God-given skill for us to make a living. So, we work, we labor to work, Next, we read, we labor to have. Let's read our passage again. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have. Why do you labor with your hands? The scripture says, that you may have. This is God's will to provide for our needs. The scripture speaks about this elsewhere. And if you would turn to 1 Thessalonians, to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, you would read these words. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, and let's read from verses 7 up to verse 12 okay first Thessalonians second Thessalonians sorry second Thessalonians chapter 3 verses 7 to verse 12 okay 
This is what the Word of God says. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither, neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an ensample unto you to follow us. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which talk among you disorderly, working not at all, but busy bodies. Mga chismosa at mga manggugulo. Now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. Paul and Barnabas worked to supply their needs in ministry and for their own life. Working is God's will to provide our needs. Also, labor to give to him that needed. We read in our text again, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good that we may have. And then the phrase, to give to him that needed. This is God's will to provide not only for our own needs, but also for the needs of others. And this is not simply the beggars or strangers that you see begging in the streets. No, no. This would be of your own house as well as the household of faith. If you would turn to Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 to 10, we would read these words. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 to 10. Okay. It says this. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. So, so working is God's will to provide not only for our needs, but for the needs of those that are needy. So the believer, as a new man, must reject stealing as a means of living and regard honorable labor. Here's a summary of the comparison between stealing and honorable labor. Stealing may look hard, but actually it is quite easy. Labor, on the other hand, on the other hand is actually hard. The word itself is hard. Hindi ba yan yung nangyayari when the woman that is pregnant is ready to give birth? Labor. Diba? The Greek word also means hard work. Labor is hard. Stealing is easy. But we have to remember that stealing is destructive. Destructive to the person that you stole from and destructive to you. Who, are, who is misusing the God-given skills that He has given you. But labor is productive. It displays your God-given skill. It bears fruit by making a living. Stealing is evil, absolutely. no. Uh, there is no situation where stealing is not evil. No matter how many people can philosophize it, madaming philosopho sa mundo, but stealing will always be evil while labor 
is always good. Stealing is dishonorable. Labor is honorable. And stealing is not and never God's will to supply needs. But labor, honorable labor, is God's will to supply needs. So we reject stealing as a means of living and regard honorable labor. The way of the new man is marked by honorable work. Now we have to understand that God regards work not for salvation, but work as we display God-given skill. But when it comes to salvation, no amount of work can ever reconcile you to God. You cannot work for your salvation. You cannot work in order that you can be justified before God. No, you can't. Because the wages of sin is death. It is not good works. It is not labor. If you labor for your salvation, that's vanity. Actually, more than vanity, it is the rebellion against God's provision. Because salvation is not our work. Salvation is the work of God through Jesus Christ, His Son, who died for our sins, buried, and on the third day, He rose again. The Lord Jesus was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. For this reason, we are saved by the finished work of Jesus Christ. By the faith of Christ, we are justified before God. Maybe you're here now listening to this broadcast and you're thinking that you can work for your salvation. Maybe you're thinking, oh, if I go to church more often, maybe God can weigh my work and say, oh, you are justified before me. My friend, if you're that person, no. God will not justify you by your work. It is not by what you have done. Maybe you're here right now and you said, eh, tinanggap ko naman si Jesus Christ eh. Tinaas ko yung kamay ko to receive Him. Ay, nagtayo ako sa altar and went to respond to the gospel call of the preacher. Not by your works of righteousness are we justified before God, but simply trusting on who Jesus is, that He is God manifest in the flesh, and trusting fully in His finished work on the cross, dying for our sins, being buried, and on the third day, rising again. If you think about that, I pray that you would trust on the finished work of Jesus, not on the works of righteousness that we have done. Tonight, my prayer is that you would see that trusting in the Lord Jesus produces a new man. A new man whose way is marked by honorable labor. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for the truth that as a new man, we labor honorably, rejecting stealing as a means to live. Father, we pray that the truths that we have received from your word this evening simply burn in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you very much for listening. And we hope to see you in our future broadcast. You can also tune in on Saturday for our Comfort Verses in Context. And you may avail our videos and resources of the Family Equipping Ministry. You can tune in our videos. There's a new video every Monday, Lord willing. Also, as this is also our family's uh, home prayer meeting, we would love to pray for you. If you have any prayer requests or questions or anything that you want to discuss, you may type it in the comment section and we would love to pray for you. And if you have any question, we would love to answer you from the scriptures as the Lord would enable us. Thank you very much for listening. Do have a nice day and the Lord bless you.